I'll get started. Thanks. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm a touch late here this morning. A um, few things going on, but um, you know, just to recap, Saturday's victory. As I said after the game, I thought it was a, a very good team effort. Really, really proud of the way the defense responded. Um, you know, really worked hard a week ago to try to get some things corrected. Uh, from not playing well against Mississippi. Uh, you could tell just by what's going on in the league and the scoring that's happening, the yards and the points. Uh, these teams are, are difficult to defend. So, um, you know, much like I talked about last Monday, we did a lot of good things in the Ole Miss game. In particular, we played really good offensively. Uh, didn't feel like we played as good defensively. And uh, that just went off, Tony. I don't know if they could hear me or not, but it's off. Uh, uh, it's back. But, um, you know, just uh, challenged the defense. I really felt like uh, they responded well, um, came out and played a, a really good game. Um, offensively, uh, we've got to get some things corrected. Did not play well. Um, and, um, you know, we know that and um, know there are some things that we can get fixed, some things that are uh, easy fixes, some things are difficult. But um, we have to play as a team. We have to find a way to win. And uh, we need the offense to respond much like the defense did um, last week to come out and put it all together. And that's what gives us hope uh, as we move forward. Um, as I mentioned, it's an unbelievably challenging schedule. And uh, we need to put it all together uh, to go play a great game against Tennessee. This is an important game for us and, and our fan base and uh, another league and our division and so on. So you look at it in uh, in Again, just like uh, I believe Coach Leach said it after the game, or in, and I said it a week ago, it's going to be a grind. You just kind of re you hit the reset button each week. You know, you look at it and you feel um, disappointed with letting a game slip away here or there, but uh, it's going to be a tough grind. Um, you know, there's only six teams in our league that have a better record than us, and uh, there's eight teams that have the same or worse. So it's going to be – it's NFL parity. Uh, this year in the in the in the uh, uh, SEC and it's going to be a challenge each and every week and uh, looking forward to this opportunity with Tennessee, um, very good team, a team that uh, seems to be more physical uh, each year. Jeremy's there and the way they're recruiting, the way they're coaching, uh, they're getting better uh, at each level and um, and again they're 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 an improved football team. So we're we're looking forward to the challenge. Okay, we will throw it over for questions at this time. And uh, start with uh, Eli again. Uh, go ahead, Eli. Hey, Mark, you, you were touching base there on um, <clears throat> how important this game is to your fan base. Uh, how important is it for you and the coaching staff and specifically the players? Each year it seems like these guys get pretty fired up for this one. Well, it's 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 important. I mean, it's a it's, it's team that's – it's always feel like um, you know you're it's in your side on your side uh, of, of the league um, it's an east game it's it's a it's a rival game it's our neighbor uh, it's an important football game okay uh, next is uh, Larry Falk. Yeah, Mark when you were talking about your offense and saying some things are easy fixes could you explain a little bit about what, what will be the easy fixes? Well, I mean, the, the self-inflicted, uh, uh, you know, plays that are hurting us, um, we could control those things. So, you know, there's there's uh, many plays that that's up to us, that's up to coaches, that's up to each individual, and there's things we could get corrected. And, um, you know, there, there's things that we have done this year exceptionally well. Um, we've, we've got to put it all together. And again, the defense is a great example. I mean, I was uh, ready to pull what little hair I have out all last week and we came back and responded against a, a very good team. And uh, to hold uh, uh, that team to, to zero points, to shut them out uh, for the first time in, 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 uh, in, in Mike's Le Leach's career, I mean, uh, it is a, a compliment to our players and our staff with the way they responded. Next is Eric Crawford. Coach, we get kind of caught up in games and stats and all that's going on. I wonder 
if either watching film or even when it happened, when Josh Pascal snatches that ball out of the air and goes racing off, if you have thoughts of all that he's been through and just, just how kind of neat that moment was. Well, it, it really does. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, he's an amazing individual and, uh, you know, it's, I don't make too much of it and I don't need y'all to dig into it, but it, it's just like his leadership and what he, the way he responded at halftime, he injured his knee. He was hurt, unsure whether he could play, unsure how significant that injury is. And he's a guy that, 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 you know, was that, that wanted to speak at halftime with, with me and address the team and to lead. And, um, you know, he's a courageous young man. He's a leader. He's a, he's, uh, passionate about the way he plays and affects other people and, and he's a remarkable young man and it is something uh, especially when you think about that and you think about what he's been through and uh, you think about what coach Larman's going through and I could tell you um, without getting into details that that it's it's uh, you know it's it's just amazing and inspirational uh, what John is doing and, and, it, and it's and it's it's tough on him also to go up and to see Chris yesterday and to deliver that game ball to him and to see what Chris is going through um you know it's it's uh you know we don't take enough time to be grateful for what we have our, our team needs to understand that um you know things can change in a moment and we have enough situations on our team uh, where we can uh, just look right at those examples and um, and realize uh, how fortunate we are and we need to make the most of every opportunity that we have. And, uh, and to see Chris uh, like that, uh, you know, it was good to see him. He is strong. He's doing good. But it, it's a tough, long road uh, to recovery that he has. And um, Josh has been through um, – you know, some tough situations and to see him come out on the other side, he's, he's, he's also inspirational. Okay, our next one is from uh, Josh Moore. Since you were just talking about Josh, I, I kind of have two questions. How is he? Do you expect to have him? And then uh, my you know, original question is really about the, the offense. The, the receivers had a lot of targets that were incomplete. Um, but they only ended up with two, I think, two receptions. I think both Josh. Um, it, was that something – was that their defense doing that? Or when you kind of looked at the tape, what, what kind of – were there capacities that should have been caught? How, how would you kind of break that down? Well, uh, all the above. Um, you know, with Josh, uh, we expect him back. He's day-to-day. -day. He'll, you know, be uh, – he'll be out there at some point this week. And uh, so we'll be glad to have him back when he's ready. Um, nothing major. Uh, there and um, you know with the receivers yeah we did we didn't have a good day it was a combination of things um, certainly Terry didn't have his best day he missed some guys that were open and there were times that we had uh, catches that could have been made they were you know there were times there was very difficult catches because of the uh, the accuracy of the ball uh, there was we had uh, the worst protection uh, issues we've had all year so uh, the O-line uh, has some things that uh that we have to get cleaned up. So it, it was just overall, um, you know, we, we got to have all 11 guys, um, you know, playing at a high level uh, to be efficient. And that didn't happen on Saturday. Okay, our next one is John Hale. Mark, about the wide receivers, obviously, because of what you had to do to win games last year, they weren't catching a lot of passes. Do you feel like that group developmentally is where you want them to be, or or are we still seeing some of the effects of of what you just had to do because of injuries last season? Oh, I think just like our team, you know, we're constantly trying to get better, and uh, I don't want to single out that group because there there's plenty of areas on the team that we are constantly trying to develop and get better, and we need to do that. Right, next is Aaron Gershon. Mark, you guys have seen a lot of Jared Garitano the last three years. He seems to be a guy who's finally putting it together outside of that second half against Georgia last week. What, what's impressed you most with his development? Oh, he's – I really respect how – he's a tough guy. You know, he, he stands in that pocket. He takes some, some shots. He can deliver the football down the field. 
um, they they do a nice job of creating some matchups and and um, throwing uh, some shot plays outside and deep, and he has the arm strength to get it there and be accurate and to drop it in. Um, you know, give your give the, his receivers an opportunity to make plays. I think that was a big difference in the past two games with them. I mean, you could look at uh, um, several plays last year. It was a heck of a football game, and you could look at um, you know three, four. Uh, competitive plays that they made that 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 we didn't, and uh, that separated the, the the win and the loss outside of the uh, plays there at the goal line at the end. Um, so, and they're doing that again this year. They, and, and you know, even uh, in the Georgia game, you know, they created some one-on-one -on -one matchups that they threw it up and made some uh, really uh, competitive catches. And and he gives them a catchable football. Hey, next is John Long. Mark, Kentucky hasn't won in Knoxville since 1984. And uh, I guess they say the definition of insanity is doing the thing, same thing over and over again and expecting different results. What is your team doing differently to prepare for this experience this week? Uh, we do have a different uh, change up. I didn't like the way uh, we played a couple years ago, down, uh, driving down there in the bus, long bus ride. It's in that tweener range of whether you fly and get on a charter and all that or drive a bus down there and it's a long bus ride. And, and so we are doing some things different on Friday with our schedule and, uh, you know, throughout the week. So um, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but um, definitely I've been thinking about it for, for some time and we are going to have a different change up in our routine on Friday. I'd also like to point out uh, Saturday, I didn't uh, give these guys enough credit, but um you know, no, nobody ever wants to talk about the good things that you do in the game. They always want to point out the, the negative. But I have to give a shout out to the defense, as I did. But in particular, some guys up front. I thought uh, Quentin Bohanna, uh, Phil Hoskins, guys that you don't see um, showing up on the stat sheet, just played exceptional football, played relentlessly hard. Uh, everybody knows, you know, he sees Jordan Wright's stats and you know, some of the guys that made picks and Jamin played a great game and Boogie played a really good game. But the guys up front, Quentin Bohanna caused two interceptions and that doesn't ever show up on the on the stat sheet. But he played exceptionally hard. He's been working hard. Phil's been working hard. And I uh, just want to give a, a little credit to those guys because nobody sees it, but they are working their tails off, played relentless on Saturday and, and really showing good leadership and really appreciative of how hard they played uh, up front and gave us an opportunity uh, to play coverage on the back end and really did a good job. And uh, I just wanted to mention those guys and Josh has been playing good all year, but I really thought Q and, and Phil took it to another level and we're going to need that. Uh, and so many of our young guys played good as well. All right, Josh Moore. Hey, Mark, I noticed Akeem Hayes is, is on the depth chart. Have you had a conversation with him? Where did that come from, his, his, his tweet there kind of right after the game? Was it just frustration or? Well, well I'm going to talk with Akeem uh, this afternoon. Okay, John Neal. Mark, back on signing day, Vince kind of alluded to a little bit of tension with uh, Tennessee and some negative recruiting in this 2020 class. Just how has that dynamic with the rivalry maybe changed since you got here, especially since they've got a couple of assistants who used to work for you at Kentucky that now you're recruiting against? Uh, no, no, no different than any other team. I mean, uh, you know, but uh, the guys that, that left there that I have a great relationship uh, with and that uh, great coaches, great people, great families, and uh, still very close to and have a good relationship with. So with wish uh, those guys not the, but the best individually. But obviously, uh, you know, the game is competitive, just like every other one we play this year. Okay, our next is from Gary Graves. Yeah. Mark, I don't know if you've had a chance to really review much from um, the Tennessee-Georgia game, but some – some of the mistakes that they made, do you think, how much of that do you think it was Georgia really forcing them into mistakes? And do you think those issues can be corrected quickly um, before Saturday? Just like any of us, uh, a little bit of both. Um, there's not a team uh, that plays a game that, that doesn't feel like there's so many things that we could control to get better. It's like that every week, win or lose, 
and uh, then and there's part of it where you have to give credit to the other team. Hey, Graham. One of Tennessee's strengths is on the offensive line. What do they do well that makes that's going to make it a challenge for for the defensive line this week? Uh, they've uh, really become physical. I think that's an area that they've really um, drastically improved uh, since uh, Jeremy's been there, and you can see the physicality. Um, you know, uh, getting Cade in there uh, as a transfer eligible helps them along with Trey and and all those guys. They're they're a big group and they're physical and. Just like all of us in this league, once again, we're all, you know, we understand that, uh, you know, of course you got to have playmakers, but uh, you also got to be very physical and they, they definitely are that. Okay, our next is John Clay. Mark, you probably, you kind of answered my question with your praise for the defensive line, but I was just wondering when you looked at the film, was there a common thread to the inter to the six interceptions on Saturday? Um, a variety of things. I think there was, uh, you saw great individual effort like you did in boogies. Uh, that was a true takeaway, a competitive play uh, that, that Jamar made and uh, created and, and took away. There were um, some that were caused by the D line that, you know, Quentin, uh, get, you know, hustling and playing hard and creating pressure. Uh, Q had a, a direct, uh, uh, correlation between the two interceptions, which was a credit to him and, and the guys on the back end. And uh, some was good, you know, coverage and confusion and a little bit of everything. And certainly some down the stretch that were probably, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, gifts because they were in desperation mode and forcing some plays. Uh, Derek Terry. Yeah, you know, Mark, staying on the defensive line, it seemed like Isaiah Gibson, when he got in there, uh, seemed like he made the most of his opportunities. Just how have you kind of seen him come along, and how comfortable do you feel uh, giving him more snaps in the event that maybe Josh wouldn't be 100%? Yeah, we got to continue uh, to bring him along. I really uh, feel like Isaiah, he has the, the, the length, and he has the athleticism um, to, to be a really good player, and he's got to continue to work hard to play with that great intensity uh, on uh, every every play, every snap, and uh, in you know I think Anwar has done a really good job with our defensive line. I love the energy uh, that Anwar brings every day, and uh, is really uh, getting those guys to play hard. And, and obviously, fundamentally, um, you know at that position, you've heard me talk about it for years and years. I mean, it's a fundamental game. The closer to the to the ball you are, you know, you got to be very, very precise fundamentally and play the game right. I uh, am more obviously doing that, but also the energy that uh, that he brings. And, and I think you're starting to see that and the guys play really hard. And Isaiah is a great example of that. He's got to continue to uh, to really just take the medicine, take the pra the coaching and, and continue to get better every day. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Mark, we saw some uh, flashes from the tight ends on Saturday. Do you see those guys kind of coming on a little bit for you? Definitely. I was disappointed in the drop uh, that Justin had. That was a big play in the game. We had good momentum. And, uh, you know, those are plays that kind of get the quarterback going as well. We had it set up and uh, should have been an explosive play there. And, you know, that 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 uh, play was disappointing. Uh, we felt like Keaton's uh, play was going to be there. Um, Terry had an option at either tight end on that play, but uh, hit Keaton in the seam. And, um, you know, that was good to see. And, um, you know, of course, Brendan, uh, you know, Bates, we've been impressed with him, the way he's been playing all camp. Unfortunately, he's going to be out for a few weeks uh, with an injury. Um, but uh, he's really played well. And, and uh, you know, the same with Justin. we got to get him playing fast and with a great sense of urgency. And, you know, there's some options there. We just got to you know, put it all together and, and uh, put it on them. Uh, Josh Moore. Mark, I know the, the DBs only came up with, I think it was one of those six interceptions, but but what were those guys doing Saturday that, that made life harder for Mississippi State? And, and, and were we, are we maybe underestimating a little bit what they were doing the first two weeks, or, or is that kind of all just kind of 
everything kind of coming together at the right time? Well, no, I think, uh, you know, there was enough criticism to go around the first couple of weeks that was warranted. We didn't uh, play our best. There's no excuses. I think, you know, what you do as a coaching staff, as a team, is you really got to look at that and, and get better each and every week. Believe me, there's enough mistakes to go around, you know, all of us, you know, across the country. It, it's a matter of being able to overcome that, you know, overcome, you know, mistakes that are going to happen. Nobody's going to play perfect, but uh, you also got to improve on it each and every week. I, I, I'm grateful that, that those guys took it personal as a defense and uh, collectively um, went out there and had a great week of practice and took it to the field. And again, we've done that offensively at times as well, but uh, uh, that's what gives me great excitement when, when we put it all together. And uh, what better opportunity than this week? Uh, that's the challenge to put it all together and, and uh, look what can't look what we can be uh, if, if all sides play that way. Uh, it was great. You know, I thought special teams played exceptionally well again. Max was phenomenal. He bailed us out and did some did his job remarkably well and uh, across the board. So we just got to uh, continue to improve. But uh, defensively, um, you know, I think you know they have done some really good things at times. As we said in the old Miss game, and, and I said it, uh, I don't know if y'all saw, but I mean, you know, they played pretty good again this past Saturday against a pretty good team. Um, so, um, you know, that they're no joke, and and what they do puts some pressure on you. And uh, you know, but we had an opportunity to win the game, you know, and that that's that's on us, and uh, and you know, that's what we're trying to build on and, and build on the positive things, and the and the mistakes gets fixed. Sometimes it's a scheme. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, poor, you know, discipline of eyes or, or you know, technique. And, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it has to do with the opponent and what they're doing to you and, and the stress that they put on you and uh, in the matchups that they put on you with, uh, with some explosive players. Uh, you have to be able to hold up to that. So it's going to be a different challenge each and every week. Uh, John Hale. Mark, obviously Mississippi State has one of the best run defenses in the country, at least on, on paper. How much of what happened Saturday was them slowing your run game, or would you have liked to maybe try a little harder to, to establish that, especially early in the game? Oh, I think we tried pretty hard to establish a run game. I think you have to give them credit in uh, where, where they played really well at times and beat us at times. And they're, they're, again, just like anything, there are times when uh, – you know, we need to, to block it better. You know, our guys have good experience, but credit them. They do some different things and twist and put put a little bit of doubt in your mind. And, uh, and uh, you know, the through, you know, where there are certain plays where we wish uh, we would have done it uh, differently as far as the, the, the adjustments that we make and, and how we block things. And there were times when they beat us. Uh, there were times when we made some mistakes. Um, you know, so you put it all together and uh, wasn't very efficient. And then, you know, and then it gets aggravating because then you get efficient, you get ahead of the change, you have an opportunity uh, to, to maybe separate and, and, uh, and we turn the ball over again, you know, and, you know, that, that can't happen. You know, we, we can't, we can't fumble the football away when you have an opportunity to start pulling away. Mark story. Mark, two things. Uh, after you looked at the film, did anybody on the offensive line play well? And secondly, did you get a chance to congratulate your nephew for uh, the big catch against Texas? Uh, yeah, the offensive line will be fine. Those guys are experienced. They're veteran. They take pride in their work. And uh, we'll get some things corrected. Um, you know, so they'll, 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 we'll, be, we'll be good. Um, um, not one of our best performances, but uh, they'll respond the right way. Um, and I did talk to Drake after his game uh, prior to our game um, and, uh, and was very excited for Drake and for Bob and Carol. And, and you know, there's a guy that, um, you know, grew up in, in Norman and grew up with that uh, Sooner uh, DNA in his blood from, from day one. And uh, for him to make that game-winning catch against Texas – uh, in that game, um, very happy for him. He's worked exceptionally hard. He's a competitive kid and a uh, really good player. So really happy for him. Okay, our last two questions are going to be uh, Larry Vaught. 
Mark, you mentioned Max again about what a good game he had. The SEC's honored him. Yet I know a, a mutual friend of ours, Max, told him after the game that he thought he was average at best. He wasn't very happy with his performance. Is that just typical Max? Is he never happy or is he just mad because they had that one return? Well, I just think, you know, that's him. You know, he's, you know, he wants to be the best in the country. He has that competitive spirit. And, um, you know, he's being authentic there. He's being real, and that's who he is, but that's what makes him great. And our last question will be from John Clay. Go ahead, John. Mark, you mentioned it there at the front. The story of the league so far is, seems to be all the offense and the points being scored. Is there any particular reason for it, or is it just one of those things this year? I, I'm not sure. You know, I think it's one of those one of those things. I mean, you know, the minute you say anything, there, there there's no built-in excuses. It is what it is. You know, for all of us, I know, it's you know, as a as a team for us, we're getting better with every opportunity, with every practice, with every game, and um, you know, it is what it is. If I say it's because of you know, practice or opportunity or games or spring, you know, you're just making an excuse. Uh, but it does seem to be like uh, all of us are having the issues at times. Um, that That's for sure. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we improved a great deal between uh, the opener and the third game, and we got to continue to do that. And we really have to do that across the board. Um, but it, as I mentioned, um, you know, you, you're not alone. Um, you know, this is going to be a grind and uh, you just got to hit the reset button each week and you got to take it, uh, each week is just, uh, you know, just try to go one and zero that week, and, and uh, win or lose, just put that game behind us, learn from the mistakes, and move on.